Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and today we're talking about the Creality Ender 3. Why the Ender 3? Because it fits in the palm of your hand, but not mostly because it's a pretty awesome printer. Now I've had the printer for about a year now and I've really abused it and put it through its ringer. I've had things fail, break, I've upgraded things, and I've had some really good successful prints out of it. So I wanted to make this video a little bit of a master guide of all the things I've learned about the Ender 3. From what you should look for directly out of the box, what things are going to be loose, what things are going to fail and break sooner than later, what upgrades you should look into, what upgrades I've had that have worked and some upgrades that maybe haven't. This is going to be a pretty long video and I apologize for that ahead of time. I will include some key talking points right here that you can kind of skim through and fast forward if you're, no, you're not interested in this or that or that, but oh, that one looks pretty cool. So hopefully that will help you guys out and hopefully by the end of the video you have a little bit of a better understanding about just the entirety of the Ender 3. I don't want to clog my channel with a bunch of clickbait, what bed should you buy, what hot end should you buy, what about this extruder. I want to get it all in one video, this way you guys get as much information in one shot as possible. I think that just about does it, so let's get started. So first thing I want to iterate before we even start, it doesn't matter how good your G-code is in the computer, how good the software is, how good you are at the slicer settings and understanding every little bit of Cura or S3D. That doesn't mean anything if your printer isn't built properly. If there's things that are loose that shouldn't be loose, if things are acting weird, if your bed isn't level, it, no amount of G-code is going to actually save your print and make it come out good. If anything, it's a little bit of the opposite. Even if you have a little bit of iffy settings on your printer, on your G-code, your printer will sometimes still pump out a pretty nice print and you'll uh, you'll be okay with it. So I want to implore you guys to really just take your time and learn the printer and understand all the components. And I'm not talking about every single thing that's in the main board and all the little you know nuts and bolts. I just mean the very basics. What's your extruder? What's your hot end in your nozzle? Your end stops, your motors, your belts. Just understanding those little bits of basics. When you start troubleshooting things and following guides, kind of like this, you'll have a much better understanding of where to look when somebody says extruder. So you built it, it's out of box, it's ready to go. A couple things I wanna talk about before you actually turn it on and start trying to level everything and get everything printed. Make sure your, all your wires are hooked up properly. Now the Ender is kind of pretty easy to set up. The only issues you might ever have are actually accidentally sw swapping your X and your E. Make sure these are actually hooked up to the right spots because when you go to actually auto home your bed for the first time, your extruder might start spinning and your nozzle actually won't move at all. So if for some reason you auto home and your extruder is moving and trying to move filament and this isn't moving at all, swap those two wires. Make sure everything else is plugged in nice and tight. Your end stop, your end stop, make sure that's all good to go. Make sure your Z stop right here is actually installed into the rails properly and at the right height. That's what this little foot's here for, to make sure that this is actually at the right level. Aside from that, there's really not too many wires on this one. If you're building something like a CR-10S, uh, that might have a little bit more complications to it. I literally just saw this video today and it irks me every time. And I understand that a lot of you might be new and it's a video of people grabbing their hot end and wobbling it and asking, does this look right? Should this be loose? You gotta ask yourself, does that look right? Do you think this whole assembly should be wobbling back and forth and back and forth? Do you think your bed should be moving back and forth, left and right? No, these components are only supposed to move in one direction. This is supposed to move left and right, your X, your bed's only supposed to move in and out, and your Z is only supposed to move up and down. Any other alterations in that play are gonna cause weird issues with your prints. Your printer most likely came with a little wrench. So on the bottom here, this little back wheel, there's actually a hex nut that has flat ends on it. And if you go and turn this in one direction or the other, the whole thing comes loose. Turn it back, it's not loose anymore. This is your eccentric nut, and there's a couple of these hidden around the printer. The biggest, the first one is back here, and you're gonna wanna tighten it enough to where this moves freely. You can over tighten it and be careful. Tighten it just so this wants to move. There's another one hiding in here. And what this does is it keeps this level left and right. This is still gonna move just a little bit because the way the Ender's designed with only one Z screw, this is still gonna droop just a little bit, but you don't want it to move too much. It should move up and down pretty uniformly. And then the last ones are actually under your bed right here. Now your Ender has four wheels. One, two, three, four. And there's actually only two eccentric nuts and they're actually on this side. And you're gonna adjust those so your bed doesn't wobble left and right. 
Now this is actually the entire table I'm moving. The bed doesn't wobble, we're good to go. The next thing you're gonna wanna look for is your Bowden tube. Now your Ender 3, or maybe even your Ender 3 Pro, might have came with a white Bowden tube. It looks something like this. It's a stock white tube that sits on your printer. And while I encourage you to change this out immediately, if you are running the stock one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's pushed all the way down into this coupler. This is your hot end with your nozzle, and it looks like this. So that's where your Bowden tube coupler goes in, and you can actually see a little bit of silver down there. And then this center rod, you see the two little rods on the left and right, and then there's the larger one. And if I look through these fins, you can actually see it travels all the way through it. And your Bowden tube is supposed to come all the way down and touch the back of your nozzle. A lot of people underestimate just how far this needs to go in. That's all the way down, even through that silver tube. And if I measure it out with my finger, it goes in quite a bit. So your tube needs to be pushed that far into the actual hot end on your printer. What I might suggest you do before you actually even push this down is pull the entire tube out and make sure this end right here is cut perfectly flush and flat. If it's angled at all, it's not gonna meet up with the back of your nozzle properly and you're actually gonna get a little bit of leakage out of there. But if you cut it nice and square and flush and push it down in there, you're good to go. The next thing I would do right out of box is make sure your screws underneath your bed are tightened all the way down. This is gonna lower the entire bed completely down as much as possible because what you're gonna do is do your first auto home. It's gonna move your nozzle all the way to the left. It's gonna move your bed all the way back and then it's gonna move your Z all the way down. And as this comes down, there's a high probability that your nozzle could, could collide with the corner of your bed. And we don't wanna do any damage to this before we even get the chance to turn it on. So make sure the knobs are all the way down and this will give you a good baseline to start leveling your bed. Now, I'm not gonna power this thing on because A, it's really hot in here right now and B, I don't want it to make it even hotter. So we're gonna imagine that this auto-homed. And if you do the auto-home procedure, it should always go X, Y, Z. If it goes out of this order, something in your printer is probably hooked up wrong. Or if your printer, if this moves, starts moving in the opposite direction, I've seen this happen before where the, the nozzle and gantry starts going to the right. They actually had the X and the Y wires uh, flipped. So pay attention to that. Now I'm not going to take you through the leveling process. If you guys want to see how I level a printer in about a minute, and it's actually an Ender 3, go watch my upgrading the Ender 3 video. And I show you a real quick, easy way with a sticky note, how to level this bed perfectly. And I level this thing maybe once every two months just to make sure, and it never comes out of level. That about does it for the things I would do directly out of the box, just getting this thing turned on and set up. Now we're gonna start talking about a little bit of troubleshooting and some of the things I've actually ran into while owning this printer. The first one's actually one of the funniest that I haven't had happen on any other printer, but it has to do with the spool holder. Now, if you look at the spool holder, and it might be a little bit hard to see with that light, I apologize. I actually have the spool holder tilted forward a little bit. What happened was I had it tilted back and the spool holder was kind of, uh, the spool was moving and moving and rocking and it actually ended up falling off and falling onto the print bed. The print didn't fail, it kept going, it was able to move off, it didn't knock any wires out. But now what I do is I actually just bend the spool holder forward. So as the spool starts to roll, it just moves to the front. Do this if you want, you don't have to. It was just a kind of a funny thing that happened to me. Let's real quick talk about the bane of a lot of people's existence, the extruder. This is not the extruder. I understand that this is what where the filament is being extruded. That's not the extruder. That is the hot end. This is your e-motor, this little gold gear up here, and this cool little spring thing. Now, one thing I would check immediately out of box is this gold little gear right here actually has two little set screws on it. And one of these set screws is supposed to be on the flat side of this rod. It might be a little difficult to see, but right here you can see a gap. And this rod that comes out of the extruder actually has a shaven flat side. And that set screw needs to be pushed up against this, or as this extruder spins, it's actually not gonna catch anything and it's gonna just not push filament. If you have your extruder gear start slipping or what will happen is this gear will actually come loose and the rod inside will just start spinning, you might end up with a print like this where the structure kind of printed but it was under extruding and now it's nice and soft. No, this was not the point of this print but it did try its best, bless his heart, and uh, this is what you'll end up with. This is massive under extrusion and that's the first place I would look is actually your extruder to see if this gear had came, come undone. Now say your extruder is working, and I'm sure you've all heard this noise, pop, 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 pop. 
your extruder gear is clicking and popping. And I see this video all the time too. And people swear they don't have a clog. People swear their level. People swear their Bowden tube is pushed in all the way. You're lying. One of those things is wrong. There is a reason that your filament isn't traveling through your Bowden tube. That's all this is meant to do is push the filament through the tube. Something is stopping that. Maybe it's jammed up here and it didn't actually make it through the tube. You have a leak, you have a clog, something's wrong. But no matter what, this extruder is going to push filament through 100% of the time and it's gonna try. A stepper motor has a magnet in it, so that pop is it actually just missing the magnet and skipping and skipping. Now you have to think here, the filament wants to go somewhere. So a couple things can happen if you have this. Most of the times it's because your bed's not level. So re-level your bed, make sure your filament's coming out. A good way to check that it's actually an unlevel bed is to raise your bed up like, or raise your nozzle up like this, heat up the whole entire printer, and then actually start pushing some filament through. If filament comes out of your nozzle just fine when it's high, you're too close to your bed, you're unlevel. But if now filament's not coming out at all and your, you know, your print head is lifted up, then you wanna start looking to make sure your Bowden tube didn't back out, you don't have a clog in your uh, heat sink, and you know you can. there's some other problem going on. It's a good way to start troubleshooting. Now say you have a clog, say your bed's on level and you've just letting it go and pop, 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 pop. Something's gonna give. And nine times out of 10, it's actually gonna be your Bowden coupler that goes into your extruder gear. Now I have a warning flag here and I've never seen anybody else do this and maybe it'll catch on, I don't know. But as you see your prints going, you'll see retraction. It's where your, print, your printer is actually pushing the filament in and pulling it out, pushing it in and pulling it out. And what that's doing is it's trying to prevent stringing. It pulls the filament back through the nozzle as the nozzle travels around the bed so you don't get those weird spider web lines. Now, as this happens, it's gonna constantly push and pull and push and pull and push and pull. What I did is I took a little piece of tape and I butted up against the Bowden coupler and that flag shouldn't actually move but it's a nice visual representation because this is all blue. It's hard to see when this is moving, but now I have a solid line there. So if this tube starts to move in and out, in and out, I can see this flag start kind of wobbling back and forth. And it's a good indication if your Bowden coupler is starting to fail. Now you might've woken up to spaghetti one time and it sucks. This tube will blow out and the extruder just keeps spinning and spinning and pushing it all out. It's a mess. I have had a couple Bowden tube blowouts. Luckily, I was able to just rewind the filament. I've seen other people who weren't so lucky where it actually gets messed up, droops into the print and starts to melt. It can be a bad day. If you have a blowout, you need to get a new Bowden coupler. There's little plastic teeth all inside here. And if it blows out, it'll typically just shred those teeth. There's actually no teeth left in this one. This one had a blowout. I just keep it, you know, for funsies. So pay attention to that and make sure this is tight. What I started doing is when I put my Bowden tubes in, whether it's a Capricorn upgraded tube or even the factory white tube, I'll actually start scoring the outside of the tube with like a razor and actually almost like sandpaper making nicks and gouges just on the outside to give the teeth inside the coupler something to bite on because this is obviously a nice smooth PTFE tube and having a little bit of bite surface really doesn't hurt. Next up is this travesty to justice. This is a plastic extruder. I already upgraded the extruder on this ender and that's in the other video. This is an official Creality all metal extruder. You can get them off of Amazon for like 10 bucks and this is another all metal extruder. They do the exact same thing. They supplement and replace this. This gear moving and this pushing filament through here relies on this spring tension. It wants this bearing to push against the filament and spin. So if you lose that tension, the filament's not gonna go through. Now, you might have an under extruding problem and not know why. Take this off and flip it upside down. What happens is right in here, this will start to crack from that pressure. This stepper motor gets hot. It heats up hot, cold, hot, cold cycles. Plastic doesn't like that. It'll actually crack right under here and it'll look totally fine, but it's not getting that proper spring tension. The all metal extruder is all metal. It eliminates this problem. And this is one upgrade that you can get it once it happens. You don't need to go and spring for this immediately, but it is something I do recommend if you do have a plastic extruder, you're gonna upgrade it eventually. It will fail. They're pretty much guaranteed to fail eventually. So getting the all metal one works just fine, but you can definitely use this until it fails. There's nothing wrong with that. The Bowden tube is something I would go and swap out immediately though. This is a genuine Capricorn Bowden tube and I've never had a problem with it at all. Now you can get these in kits that comes with the tube, the extruder, and some other little doodad upgrades, like stronger bed springs. Now you don't really need these on the uh, Ender 3. Um, I know I'm kind of bouncing all over the place. I apologize, I forgot to talk about these. But these are um, much stronger orange bed springs. 
Now, the Ender won't really come on level too, too often, but like on a CR-10S, an S5, these stronger springs really do help a lot because as the print starts to actually print, it's gonna add its own weight, even minuscule, and it's gonna actually start to push the bed down or list the bed or tilt it in some direction. So these stronger springs help it maintain that level properly. So go ahead and get that kit, upgrade to the all metal extruder, it's absolutely wonderful and I've never had a problem with it. And it gives you a couple spare parts because over time, these little gold gears are gonna wear down. So I'm still using the stock one and then I have the spare one that came with it. Now your extruder is working nice and good. It's pushing filament properly and it's going into your hot end. There's another little point of failure on these Creality hot ends that can be a little bit trickier and intimidating to get to. So this is your heat sink, the little red thing. This is your heat block. There is your nozzle. And then on the side, you have your uh, heater and then you have a little thermistor, and this is like a little thermometer, this little delicate wire. There's a little glass bulb in there. And this can be very intimidating to take apart. I suggest you get your hands on a spare one and always have it. A, this way you can kind of mess around and know what you're dealing with before it's covered in plastic and you have no idea what you're looking at. Don't use a wrench to take your nozzle off. This is a six millimeter socket. It's very much worth the investment on getting. This way you can actually just go ahead and pop your nozzle off. Now, this is a brand new hot end, so that came off very easily. You're gonna need to heat yours up. Don't burn yourself. This is very, very hot. So that's the bottom of your nozzle. Now, if you look in here, you can actually see this Bowden tube go all the way through. This is what I was talking about before with the Bowden tube meeting the bottom of the nozzle. That's it. That's what's happening inside your hot end. What can eventually happen is that Bowden tube could come out and now there's a gap. And it's gonna to start to fill in that little bit of a gap and it's either gonna leak out the bottom of your nozzle or it's gonna leak out the top right here. Now I wanna show you guys the insides of this real quick because a lot of people don't and it can be very intimidating for them. So there's a little screw right in here and you ha you'll have access to this if you take off your hot end. Now always break torque with the flat side first and I already did that. Break torque with the flat side because the last thing you wanna do is round this out and then loosen it with the rounded side. So that's already loose. And then there's two here on the bottom. Now I'm gonna leave everything else in, but you gotta be careful. These wires are delicate and you don't wanna break them. So once those are out, you can actually pull this heat sink right off. And then there's this long metal rod that's actually sitting through here. And there's not much to this at all. Now this metal rod, if you can watch it, actually threads in. Now why would you want this to thread in? This can actually thread in all the way through the heat block. Now what can happen is if I loosen this a good amount, and then I put my nozzle back in there. Now, what I can do is I can actually screw this nozzle down all the way till it bottoms out on the heat block. But how do we know that this is installed all the way? This threads in an, a certain amount. I didn't thread it in all the way. I've only seen this on a couple hot ends and it is a good place to start. There is still a gap in between here, between the back of the nozzle and where this rod is. Now, obviously my Bowden tube is gonna try to fill in that gap but you don't wanna take any chances with this. So what I like to do on my nozzles is actually tighten this rod all the way down until my nozzle won't go all the way into the heat block. Now don't do this too much because then you're gonna to need to re-level your bed, but I like to leave just a little bit of a gap so my nozzle isn't all the way flush. And what that's gonna ensure is that the nozzle is actually meeting up to the back of this rod right here, and then my Bowden tube isn't gonna have any weird gaps on the side. In case it does start to have a very small leak, it's really not gonna have anywhere to go. Don't be afraid to take this apart at all. It is very simple and it'll definitely aid with your understanding of the printer, especially with troubleshooting when you're trying to clean things out. While I'm assembling this, I wanna talk about another thing, a no clogged nozzle. I'll see people all the time post asking about, hey, where do I get a new nozzle? I need a new nozzle, I had, a, I had a clog, I had a blowout. It's clogged, nothing's coming out. And they'll try to swap the whole nozzle. Well, why? What's in there that you think you can't clean out? Is there something besides plastic in there? What could have possibly gotten in here besides plastic? A clogged nozzle is usually caused by something. It just doesn't randomly clog. Now, if your print head is too close to the bed, filament can't come out, you're under extruding completely, what can start to happen is the heat, the plastic will start to melt and melt and melt, and it'll start to heat up and actually move up this rod a little bit, that little silver rod in there, and the heat, it's called heat creep, and it'll start to actually move its way up not allowing any pressure or the plastic's just melting too high. The plastic shouldn't be melting up here. It should melt when it hits the heat block as it comes out of the nozzle. That's about it. So if your nozzle clogged, there's typically a reason for it that you have to try to find. And your printer should have came with this cool little weird spring needle thing. It's actually a nozzle cleaner and it goes all the way through. What I'll do when I'm cleaning out my nozzles is I'll take off the Bowden coupler, pull the entire Bowden tube out and actually have it sit like this. 
heat it up and you can literally just floss this through the nozzle to try to clean things up and make sure everything's good to go. I think that does it kind of for the hot end issues I've ever run into. Another thing is there's actually something on here called a thermal sock. It's a little rubber sock that's actually right here on my ender and it looks like this and it sits over top of this and actually keeps the heat insulated inside that heat block. You need an insulator on your heat block. Some of them might, some of your heat hot blocks might come with um, really weird yellow t insulated tape that covers up all of this. Cut that crap off, go on Amazon, buy a thermal sock and put it on. If your heat is fluctuating a lot when your print, print head is heated up, it's probably because you don't have a sock or the crappy yellow tape stuff is starting to fail. This thing will help stabilize the temperature properly and keep everything where it's supposed to be. Please just remember when messing with this, whether it's installed, it does get incredibly hot, 200, 220 degrees Celsius. It will burn you instantly. I've burned many a fingertip with this, so please just be careful with it. Now, all of this doesn't mean crap if your print doesn't even stick to your bed. You've gone through the trouble, nothing's leaking, everything's tight, you're not under or over extruding, your temperature's good, you've auto-homed, you've leveled, but nothing's sticking to your bed. Now, I've never seen people really have too much of a problem with the stock ender beds. It's a kind of a neat fiberglass bed. And honestly, I had pretty good uh, bed adhesion with this. It came with my ender. Um, I can't remember offhand what comes with the Ender 3 Pro. I think it's an improved bed surface. I think it's glass. I don't think it's this fiberglass one. I swapped to a magnetic print surface because I just like them. And it's a peelable magnetic bed. And this gave me amazing adhesion with PLA and PLA+. Plus. You can read guides all day about magnetic beds and the flexible beds and the fiberglass beds and Creality's improved microporous bed or the glass beds that these printers come with that are almost always warped. This is actually the bed off my CR-10S. I literally never got anything to stick to this properly and I swapped to a magnetic bed on that and that's why now I use them for all my prints. However, I have started to like the microporous surface that is on my Ender 5 Plus. So I got one for my CR-10S. The magnetic bed and the stock fiberglass bed work just fine. Make sure they're clean, do your research, figure out what works best for you. I like this, you might like that, to each his own. I think that just kind of about covers everything I've ever ran into on this Ender. I only have upgrades on it that have actually helped me. The only ones I think I don't really need, like I said, are the bed springs. They came with the kit, but the, boat, the genuine Capricorn tube, the all metal extruder, just really, really beneficial to this. The bed, that's totally up to you. When you do start your first print, when you are trying to level and dial things in, watch that first prime line. Get down here, actually watch the nozzle. See how close it is, see how far away it is. Watch that first print. If it's sticking over here, but it's not sticking over here, you're probably not level. So take your time with that. It can really save you a lot of headache. Understand how to level your bed. It is the most important thing and you can have it down to literally a matter of seconds if you just kind of understand the dynamics. Unfortunately, level isn't the right word for it. It's just the terminology that's probably never gonna go away. I've seen people actually have an actual bubble level on their bed. When we talk about level, we're talking about the distance between the nozzle all the way to the left and the bed, and all the way to the right and the bed. This nozzle distance should be the same above all four springs. It's level to itself, not actually to the ground or the table, it doesn't matter. You can, if you really wanted to, and I've seen people do it, you can print sideways. It'll still come out fine. So understand what's going on with this. Really understand the whole extrusion system and the hot end system. And for the love of God, make sure you pay attention to the voltage on the back. I have blown up an ender because I left it hooked to 115 and I plugged it into a, a UK outlet that had 220 and I roasted the entire thing. So don't do that. Don't be me. Learn from my mistakes. Whoa, this looks just like my intro. My original intro and outro were completely out of focus, so I'm redoing them after I already cleaned everything up. Deal with it. But that just about does it for this video, guys. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. Like I said, I, I know it was long, and I tried to cover everything I can think of without dragging on too long. Obviously, I did skim over a couple things. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below. If you want questions answered quicker, look into the Discord. There's a link for that down below. The Discord channel is free and it's centered around 3D printing and cosplay and everything in between. We have people who know way more than me and we have absolute newbies who are in the same boat as you. So whatever reason had brought you to this video to begin with, whether you're about to buy an under three or you've been troubleshooting one, driving yourself crazy for the past couple weeks. Whichever reason, look into the Discord or drop a comment down below. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, if you guys could subscribe, that'd be really cool. It would really help me out. 
and hopefully you found this video informative. If you guys like this type of video, you know, the little bit of like longer review video talking about all these issues and troubleshooting, let me know. I have my CR10Ss, I have my Max, my Ender 5 Plus. I also have a Sunlu S8 I'm about to build and abuse for a little bit. So please let me know if you guys actually find these videos beneficial. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I didn't want to clutter the whole channel with just Ender 3, Ender 3, Ender 3. There's tons of videos about different components and troubleshooting. Hopefully this can be one little bit of a master guide for you and hopefully it can help you out in the future. I really appreciate you guys watching and I think that just about does it. So have a good day.